Hello everyone, my name is Equinox Doodles, and I'm the creator of the Chris mod for Rivals of Ether, as well as a few other original characters with my team Rose Petals. And this is going to be a first part in a long series of videos for beginners on how to make their own Rivals of Ether workshop character. All the files and everything I talk about will be in the description, so if you ever get lost or you need a timestamp, that will also be down there. But all of the goodies that I will be using will actually be in the description for you to use. So go ahead and download those. We'll get right into it in a short minute. So this entire tutorial is supposed to essentially be how to create a character. This won't be from scratch. This will be mainly from scratch on the coding side, but not so much from the actual animation side because we're actually going to be recreating Guadua, who is already on the Rivals of Ether workshop. All of her sprites were done by Danny Eru, and all the coding was done by Youngblood. So thank you guys so much for doing that, for being the great example. I'm just going to be essentially trying to help beginners by using that as our foundation. So once you've downloaded the workshop tutorial file, you're going to be greeted with four different folders, as well as a little notepad document. So this notepad document will teach you how to get the Roa dialect, which is right here, and put that into GM Edit, which is this file right here. Alongside that is the workshop helper. This is how we visualize our hitboxes, so that way it's a lot easier for us to code and to understand what we're going to be seeing before we even put it into the game. The last thing that we have here is the character files. So this main part right here, the sand bird with the phone, is our base that we are actually going to be using. It was created by Muno, so thank you Muno. So this base right here is what we're going to be putting into our workshop folder, which I actually have pinned over here, but I'll show you how to get to that normally. And over here is all of the sprites that we're going to be using for Guadua. So in our actual workshop tutorial file, you'll see a few things. So Essentially what this is, is how our actual character is going to be broken down. So all this stuff right here is stuff usually that won't be able to be changed through coding. You can do it through coding now through these sprites, but this stuff you can't pull using a function like sprite get. These three files are the core of the actual inner workings of your character, but this is more so how your character will actually be created. Config.ini is how the workshop actually views your character. This is how your game will actually see your character. So all the vital information should be put into here, and all the variables and stuff will be put into our scripts. So our scripts is our code that we will be running into the game. Our sounds, this is where we put custom sounds. I already loaded this up with all of the sounds that you will need for Guadua. If we open this up here, you'll see that there are stuff already in there. All the files that should be in sounds should be .ogg files. That's just how GameMaker reads those sounds. And the sprites is all of our custom sprite animations. Right now you will see that they are Sandbird, and we can't have that. We actually need to be replacing these with Guadua sprites. So all the sprites that are after underscore foe, Go ahead and select the first one, hold down shift, and click the last one, and then press delete. And I'll move those all to the recycling bin. And then from there, we're going to back out, go to our Guadua sprites, select all of those with control A, and paste them into our workshop tutorial. This stuff you will also just go ahead and replace with Guadua's stuff here. So just shift, control C, control V, replace. All right, now that's all set up. All of our sprites are in there. Go ahead and copy the workshop tutorial and go find your workshop folder. You can do this by going up to here, doing percent app data percent just like you would for a Minecraft. And then you will be put into your roaming folder. From there, we're gonna back up and go into our app data. Then we're going into our local. 
And then we are going to scroll down until we find Rivals of Ether, which should be right here. Then you're going to go into the workshop folder and you are going to paste in your file. So now that we actually have our file into the main workshop folder, we're going to actually get into a little bit of coding. So first go ahead and open up GM edit. You can find that in this little folder right here and just open up the editor. And instead of going in and opening the files that we need, nor like a normal, you know, notepad or something like that, where we just open up a text document, we're actually going to go into our workshop tutorial folder, grab our config file, and drag and drop it into here. If you have the ROA dialect, everything should load up as you see here, and it should be perfectly fine. Otherwise, you will need to try and figure out what went wrong in the ROA dialect start. So now that everything is actually in here, we are going to go ahead and load up Rivals of Ether. I have turned off the sound to make it easier to hear my voice. We're going to go into local practice because we need to be able to refresh our character. And you are just going to go ahead and find the workshop tutorial character file that we have in there. You should see that it is Guadua and all the colors are not working. So why don't we actually fix that real quick? So I'm going to challenge you guys to go ahead and do the color stuff on your own. Go to the colors.gml file. You'll actually see that there is a link to the site that I like to use for doing the colors, as well as the optional Muno method instead, if you will prefer that. It details everything that you need to do if you want to read through that. But I like to use the GML helper tool. So go ahead and open that up. There is some tutorials actually on the site there. If you want to watch them real quick, they're pretty short, so it shouldn't be too long. So go ahead, break down your colors into actually how they're supposed to be grouped. And we'll come back and I'll show you the three different solutions that there is to the problem. So welcome back. This is probably what your colors should look like. This is how Guadua's colors are actually set up normally, but this is usually how most workshop characters' colors are set up. So as you can see, we are choosing the middle chunk of our colors, and each of our palettes, they might not be the same, maybe you made your own, whatever, but this is what they you know, should essentially look like. Very simple, very easy to understand. The other option is to actually make the darkest hue its own little color group. This allows you to have a lot more control over the shading for those colors. As you can see, there's a lot of a deeper, richer blue on this purple one. It's a lot darker, it's a lot deeper. Allows you to get really creative with your colors. This is how I like to set up my colors because I usually use a lot of characters who have a good chunk of colors. So I like to have a lot of variety in mine. The last option is the one that I set up, is where we actually have enough colors to break them all into their own color group, allowing you to have complete control over the colors and their hue shifting, giving you some really creative options. So as you can see between this one, the tree is a little lighter, it's a lot greener, and the purple is just a little bit darker, but might be a lot easier to see on the blue here if I were to swap to the blue. It's a lot more intense, has a lot more color to it. This is of course optional and this is only reserved really for characters who don't have a lot of colors. This is also how Muno colors are typically set up because he doesn't use a lot of colors. So this might be familiar to people that use that. But now that you have your colors all set up, you might notice that on the side here there is a ton of code. This is actually completely set up normally and free for you once you use this program. So now that they're all done, go ahead and just control A in this region, copy that, and just go ahead and paste it into your file. 
This part down here is just how to reload it into colors that into the color helper. But now everything should be all set. So if we open up rivals once more, unload our character by selecting another character, then we load it back up. You should see that our colors are now fully put in. And you might also notice that I set up their colors in a very particular way. This is the Roa color like code. Essentially, this is how most of the Rivals of Ether cast has their colors set up. So it's default, blue, red, green, black slash white, and purple slash pink. So now we go back into the tutorial grid and it looks like our sprite offset is a little messed up. That is because of the way that we have our load.gml set up because we didn't change any of that. We just loaded in the sprites for Guadua. But the load.gml is loading all the sprites for Sambert instead. So how do we go about fixing that? Because Guadua shouldn't be in the floor here. Well, that's where our Hurtbox helper comes in handy. So if we go back to there, it's the workshop helper master. Open up the application here. This is what your helper should look like. This is the one that Dan made. It's the one that I included in your little folder. And this is the one that I tend to use. So up here is the timeline. This is how you will select what animation frame that you're looking at. This is these little arrows here control the actual sprite because sometimes your sheet might go off because you have a lot of numbers in your sprite. And we'll get into that when we actually do attacks because sometimes you have a ton of animation sprites. Over here is the actual sprite names that we are loading. So we have our sprite and our hurt box. The hurt box is what we're going to be looking at for attacks so when we get there. It's the green stuff when you turn on hitboxes to actually see where your character is. And that's the spot that characters can actually hurt you during attacks. Your origin is what we're actually going to be looking for when we put our character together. So this is the actual offset that will be used for our sprites. And of course our hitboxes are... Well, our hitboxes. We'll get into those when we get to attacks, and you're free to mess with those before we even get there if you would like to. So let's go ahead and load up a sprite. So go ahead and select the three dots here. It should load you into your workshop tutorial sprites, uh, or you might just have to go find it. it. Should be pretty easy. And let's just load up our idle. So go ahead and put idle. You'll also notice that we start at 0 and not 1, even though we have strip 8. That's how Game Maker runs its animations. So this is actually animation frame 1, but when we call it in code, it will always be 0. So right now, our offset is set to 3262. So let's just go ahead and put our offset there. So as you can see, our little cursor here is where our offset is right now. What we want it to be is in the center at the bottom, but one pixel up from the bottom. And the reason is because if we look at Silvanos here, you'll notice that he's actually a pixel into the floor. That's just how Rivals of Ether characters are with their offsets. So go ahead and try your best with eyeballing the uh, offset here. You gotta make sure that it is one pixel up. So I'm going to say that's pretty good, 4694, 4694, go ahead and save that in your load.gml, go back to Rivals of Ether and press F5, and all of your sprites should be reloaded, and you'll see that Guadalupe is actually now on the stage proper. So... Now that you understand how the load.gml works, why don't you go ahead and do not all of the sprites, but a good majority of the sprites. The only sprites that you need to avoid are the icon sprites, so your ghost icon that's included in there, which we'll actually touch on in a little later, and your cooldown icon right over here. 
Everything else should have an offset. If you get lost, go ahead and just check what was files. You can subscribe to her and then you can go find your actual workshop file, which should be in the same local disk or wherever your Steam library is stored, and you should find Guadua in there. You don't have to worry about the underscore hurt sprites. Those are just the hurt boxes. They follow the same offset as the normal ones. So the bear underscore hurt will have the exact same offset as bear. You don't even have to worry about those at all. So go ahead, put all the load into your character and we will meet back up once that's all said and done. So now that you have all of your actual animations put in, we can do one last thing, and that is giving our character a victory song. So to do that, we need to do set underscore victory theme, and then in parentheses, we want to look for our sound. So we're going to do sound get and then in parentheses again victory underscore quadwa and then end that with a semicolon. So that sets our victory theme to be the victory theme that's included in our sounds because we are pulling it with sound get that's a function that the Rivals of Ether workshop has and we pull this exact string name here victory underscore quadwa in. If you have a, another sound, like let's say you have victory underscore guadua 2, and you're worried that it might pull that, you don't have to worry. Whatever you put in here, it will look for exactly. So nothing at the end, it will look for exactly this file name. So don't even worry about that. So you should have all of your offsets in correctly. Go ahead and just make sure that everything lines up for you. And we're going to go and get into init. So this part right here is kind of the main part of what makes your character into your character. So we have our sound effects, our visual effects, our sprites our animation speeds and all that stuff for your character. Uh, anything else that we need. You can also put your victory theme in here if you see fit. Don't bother with the user event. That's for Munophone. And of course we have the frame data guide for the base cast in case you need that. But all these variables are what make your character into the character that they are. So your run speed, your jump speed, your character height, the knockback adjustment that you have for your character, so like how they are affected by knockback, everything is controlled in init.gml. This is what is created when your character is created onto the stage. So if I go ahead and just refresh that real quick, you should be able to see that Guadua is animated perfectly fine. All of their animations should be in pretty roughly, but there are some stuff that might be off and we'll get into that a little later. So all this stuff should now be up to you to mess with. So let's say, for example, we want to give Guadua uh, five jumps. We just go to max D jumps, which is our double jumps, change that variable. I set it to five, save it, refresh. And now if we were to jump, one, two, three, four, five. Pretty cool. So feel free to mess with that. Make that whatever you want for your character. There's also the stuff here for apps to jump and what each variable might mean in case you get lost. You can always check the Rivals of Ether workshop manual by going to rivalsofether.com slash workshop. And you can change all of these to whatever you feel is most comfortable for you. But before we do that, we have to make sure that our animations are correct. So down here, if we come to our animations, you'll see that we have some like startup active frames, recovery frames. This controls the animations for moves and actions that 
normally won't be able to be touched like your roll and your air dodge like you can't really mess with those animations unless you go into animation.gml which we're not even going to bother touching now let's double check on our crouch i want to make sure that that works oh you can see it has 14 frames so let's fix that because right now it's only doing 12 frames So I've come to the conclusion that 383 should work for your crouch animation. So if I show you real quick, see how nice and smooth it is? That's what it should look like. So now that that's all done, make sure that all the rest of the animations follow suit and make it so that way they're all nice and smooth or however you like them to be. And go ahead and mess with some of the anim speeds over here. You know, make them look as you want them to look, because this, of course, is going to be your character. And last but certainly not least, feel free to go ahead and mess with any of the stats here. This is just essentially our way of figuring out what works and what doesn't for us, and possibly for your character if you want to convert this into, well, your character instead of Guadua. So with that being said, I want to thank you guys for watching the episode. We will come back hopefully sometime next week to discuss the attacks and how they work. And then maybe we'll get into a little bit of actual coding for Guadua and get into a little bit of some of the other scripts that we have on the side here. But for now, feel free to mess with the character as you see fit. And we'll come back next week and I will explain all about attacks.